the Mega Minions are delightful to watch, not because of their powers, but because of their flaws. Um, you know, no matter how high their aspirations are, they always manage to screw up. There are five different ones. There's the flying one, um, one that has one giant laser eye. And then my favorite one is made out of rocks. And I'm not really sure what he does exactly. Despicable Me 4 is an awful movie. I have never been more bored sitting in a theater than today when I had to sit down and experience this nothing of a film. Saying nothing might actually be a compliment, because at least nothing is something I can ignore. For context, I've been for this franchise since I was a kid. The first one is a classic, the second one is just okay. I have my friend Shannon here with me. I was thinking you two could get some grub, you know, tear it up, see what happens. <laughs> The third one is bad, and this one's even worse. Yes, it's even worse than the Minions movies. This movie can't even focus on a single plot, and it's because the premise for this movie is the most dull thing ever concocted. <laughs> the Despicable Me family is in danger, because in the beginning of the movie, Gru arrests Will Ferrell, who instantly escapes. So now he knows that Gru arrested him and wants to get revenge. So now they go to a safe house and they assume new identities and they blend into urban society. Doesn't that sound amazing? And we were really excited about this idea of him having to blend into the, to the neighborhood that he's been put in. And so Gru can't wear his black and be nasty and mean. He has to wear his pink polo shirt and be a guy who wants to go to the country club and be the dad who drops the kids off at school. And we just thought we love Gru in uncomfortable positions. So we thought this would be the most uncomfortable we can make Gru. Obviously it's not. So they have to fill this movie out with five subplots within this. None of them are given time to breathe, making this movie feel absolutely empty. If anything, this reminds me of The Secret Life of Pets 2. You know, that wonderful film it's better than that i'll give it credit that might actually be one of the most insulting animated films ever made but that might be for another day to show you what i mean let's grow through the i'm sorry let's go through each of the subplots and really go through it and since the trailers have shown basically nothing about this movie aside from the basic premise and the mega minions more on that later so if you're worried about slight spoilers then either click here or don't click here if there's no click here and actually just tune off. You can go see a good movie instead, like Inside Out 2, or really anything else. Subplot number one. The Gru family are trying to blend into urban society, and this is just basically a bunch of just one-off scenes of these characters saying, Wow, I'm not meant for this, or wow, this sucks, or wow, I get bullied, and then Gru plays some tennis. Isn't that incredible? They're such hilarious scenes. I'm glad they're in the movie. Subplot number two. Gru has to steal a honey badger for this annoying child. I don't respect boomers. I just mock them. Why does she want to steal a honey badger? Because it's owned by the supervillain school she wants to go to. How does that help her get accepted there? I don't know. Why doesn't Gru tell his wife or the agency that his cover is in danger of being blown? Who knows? He hides this to the point where he's bringing the baby into the heist with them. Why? This plot is just somehow a watered down version of the brothers plot from the last movie where Gru has to do a heist with someone who doesn't know what they're doing because they want to learn from him. At least this girl isn't as annoying as Drew, though that's not exactly something to write home about. She stresses Gru out so much. He is so afraid of her and stressed out by her, which I find so funny. Um, and she knows it and it makes her, she she finds so much joy in, in giving Gru anxiety. <laughs> So I'll put a number three. Gru has the bomb with his baby, Gru Jr., who hates him because cartoon baby. This entire subplot is just a worse version of Son of the Mask. Like, do I even need to go through this plot point more? It's just bullshit. Subplot number four. Will Ferrell is the cockroach man, and his goal is to get revenge on Gru because they were rivals in high school or some shit. He has a girlfriend played by Sofia Vergara who does nothing, and then also he does nothing until the end of the movie where they need him to start the conflict again. It leads to such a lackluster action climax that it's legitimately insane. It's such a boring, lifeless, dull affair to the fact that the Minions movie has a more exciting climax. It also helped the comparisons between it 
and Son in the Mask, which is great. Also, there were no Mega Mind jokes disappointed. The final one. The last and worst of these subplots is to have the minions work for the spy agency. Now, this obviously doesn't make any sense for their motivations because in the last movie, they leave to become villains again, but fuck it. They didn't turn some of them into superheroes because they needed something to market this film. And then finally, they have them do nothing. They do a couple scenes of shenanigans and don't do anything to advance the plot. They're literally just here as filler. In a movie, mind you, that is mostly filler. This was the same thing in Despicable Me 3, except there's like a couple of funny scenes. This was just barren and empty. Really, the minions at this point in the Despicable Me franchise is scrat to Ice Age. They're just supposed to be a cute subplot to distract from the main plot. Except with Ice Age, there's like a main plot, like a main goal and focus that grows through the entirety of the movie and not just a series of vignettes. Also, Scrat is actually funny, so that would help. In conclusion, Despicable Me 4 is a dull, boring, miserable experience for anyone above the age of 12. However, if you're either below the age of 12 or just love these characters so much that you can't get enough of them, then you'll probably love this movie. But let's be honest, nothing that I will say will affect that opinion. And to be honest, why are we even kidding ourselves at that point? But I will accept this movie's existence just because Illumination can probably use this money to take more risk with their other projects. But please, if you're going to make more of these movies, do not be this lazy. Be better, Illumination, unless this is Comcast Universal's fault. In that case, I'm sorry to the staff and crew in France. Now, with that being said, I hope you guys have a nice day and goodbye.